All right, now I'm going to deal with a very heavy topic this morning. So I want you please to get ready for this. And I'm sure that most of us are going to be shocked by this topic. All right, so I want you to get ready. Listen to this. I'm dealing with the topic entitled, Raise the Dead. Raise the Dead. Matthew chapter 10 verse 8. This is what Jesus Christ has instructed us to do as believers. Now listen carefully to this. Because many of us don't get this. We don't understand this. We have not even read this. But watch this. Matthew 10 verse 8 says this. Heal the sick. Cleanse the leper. Now watch this. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. Freely you've received and freely give. I want to ask you. How many of us have been encouraged to believe God to raise people from the dead? How many of us have been taught that we need to start getting our faith level so that we can start raising people from the dead? I want to say that as long as I've been alive, not once has a preacher come to me and said, Arthur, you need to start trusting God for this. Now, I've been doing it in my own. All right. Um, I've had occasion now where I've had three people where I've prayed for that were dead. Okay, they haven't come back to life, but I've tried and I've practiced it and I'm working on it. I'm still going to get to the place where I will be in a situation where we will raise somebody from the dead. But the point is, I'm trying. The point is, I've put my faith in God and said, God, your word has instructed this as something that Christians should do. Now, the problem is, we are not seeing this being ra uh, as a common occurrence because our faith is not there. We are not expecting God to raise somebody from the dead. Now, if somebody dies, we generally just say, well, it was a time we accept it. Now, I have no problem with us trying first. In other words, until God gives us a clear word to say, listen, this person mustn't come back. I believe in trying. Now, God doesn't always sit down and give you a clear word. This person must be raised or not raised. You know, when when uh, um, Mary and them sent word to Jesus and said, listen, Lazarus is dead. They had an expectation that Jesus would come and raise him from the dead. All right. They were just upset that it took him four days to rock up. They don't like the idea that it took him forever to get there. Because remember, he dawdled. The, the travel time to get to Lazarus was not four days. It was pretty close. But it took Jesus forever to get there. Now, Jesus did that for a reason. And that reason was to make sure that there was no doubt that he was dead. Okay? It was really something that Jesus was doing. But the point is, Mary and Martha expected Jesus to come and change the situation. My question to us today is this. Are you prepared to start stepping out on these levels? It is an instruction in God's word, which we never hear about. We never get taught about and we never get told to start developing towards. Now, I know that God is going to do this. Now, people around me, the young people and the guys around me, everybody knows that we need to start stepping into this level. Okay, um, Caden has been on two occasions already um, where he's gone and gone prayed for somebody who was dead and he was part of the one where the person did come back to life. So I wanted to say this stuff does happen. But the point is, if we are not expecting it to happen in our lives, we are never going to see it. And we as believers need to start upping our game. We need to start upping our game and saying, God, we are going to get serious about these things and we are going to do what you're telling us to do. Yeah, Jesus Christ has clearly instructed the believers to go and raise the dead. Now, we need to change our approach. We need to start raising the expectancy level in our Christian walk. 
We are going to be trusting God and expecting God to change the situation. And we need to start bowling ourselves to that level. We need to start trusting God for that type of miracle to take place. You see, God wants to start doing these things through the church. Like I said, He's expecting us to do this. But we need to start being proactive. We need to start get going with these things. We need to start practicing them. And we will see some of the greatest miracles ever taking place. Because we are expecting God to rock up. And so this morning, when we come around the table, let us ask God to start stirring our hearts. That we can start believing God for the supernatural. That we can start trusting Him for these miraculous things to start taking place in Jesus' name. Because this is what it's about. This is the true Christian walk. This is what the gospel of Jesus Christ is all about. So let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for a supernatural shift and a change in our lives. God, I pray right now that you'll forgive us of any wrongdoing, any wrong thought, action, motive, or intention. But Lord, I pray right now more than ever that there will be a shaking in our spirits and in our hearts. Lord, I ask you please to forgive us where we have not expected the supernatural in our lives. But Lord, I pray right now that we are going to go into new levels. That we are going to expect you to rock up and to shift and change our circumstances in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for a supernatural move of your spirit. And Lord, I pray right now that as we take of the elements... Lord, where your body was broken for us and your blood was shed for us. Lord, the price was paid for us. Lord, that as we take of these elements right now, Lord, that we will repent of being so uh, naturally minded, but God, that we will start expecting the supernatural to take place in our lives and that you will work through us. Holy Spirit, come and stir us. And bring us to the place of destiny and purpose in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Let's partake together. Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, we just release the dynamous power of God over our physical bodies. Lord, I thank you right now that we can expect the shift in the natural in Jesus' name. Lord, I command every bit of pain and discomfort to leave my body right now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you supernaturally that we are healed. Lord, that by your stripes we were healed. We walk in divine health and divine healing is ours. Father, I thank you right now that the Spirit of God saturates us from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet. And every single symptom of sickness leave our bodies right now. Lord, we thank you that we can trust you and believe you for a supernatural miracle. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, folks, it's Saturday. I trust that you are having a glorious day. And that you're ready for an awesome, awesome, awesome weekend day. Eh? I trust that you are just having a good time with friends and family. And that you're having a good rest. And getting ready, revitalized to carry on the race and do what God called us to do. But right now, I want to pray over our families. I believe in our families. I believe in the solid foundation of what God has in our families. So let's pray. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. Lord, I pray right now for a supernatural move of your spirit in our lives. Lord, I pray for our families. Lord, I pray wherever the families are out of order, that it will come in order in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that each and every one will be born again. Lord, I pray for every unsaved person in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you that our families are saved, born again in Jesus' name. We call them in. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I thank you that everyone in our family will fulfill what you call us to do. We will be obedient and we will do what you've called us to do in Jesus' name. Father, I pray your blessing and anointing upon us. And Lord, I thank you that you are going to do something supernatural in and through every believer. 
And Lord, I thank you that our families are going to be examples of what you want as the original core and foundation of our nation. Lord, I thank you right now that as a unit, we will fulfill what you've called us to do in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. All right, folks, I want to remind you about a winter school. So tonight, 7 o'clock, next teaching's up. Get ready for it. Stay in the word. All right, this is what keeps us strong. Hearing, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. The more we get the word, the more we're going to build our faith. Amen. All right, let's get to our declaration this morning. In Jesus' name, I declare by faith that I walk in divine favor. I have preferential treatment. Supernatural increase, restoration, increased assets, great victories, recognition, prominence, petitions granted, policies and rules changed, battles won that I didn't have to fight, all because of the blessing and the favor of God on my life. So saints, I want you to go out with might, go out with valor, and go and do what God has called you to do in Jesus' mighty name.